Hello everyone, this is Fiani. Welcome back to Creatures by Fabi. So for our first project, I will use five medium canvas from Dollar Tree, some twine, and also some wooden stick. So I'm going to start by removing the plastic and also the staples on it. So as you can see, I used the knife and then a little plier to remove the staples. So once I was done with that, that's how it looks like. And now I'm going to be doing the same with the rest of the canvases. So now we have the frames ready to add the stain on it. So let's do that. All right. Once the stain was dry, the frames are ready to go. And look how cute those looks are already. I just love it. They're not too dark. They're not too light. Just perfect. <laughs> so now it's time to attach all the pieces together using wood glue and hard glue. So Basically, we're going to be making in here the base of the basket. So we making in here a little box or yeah, the shape of a lantern. So the only difference that I'm doing in here is two of the frames on the sizes. I'm placing vertical so like that I will have a different levels of frames. So like that, the largest pieces is going to simulate the handles of the basket. All right, you will see that in a little bit. So here I'm just keep adding more glue to attach all the pieces together. So now we have the base of the basket and we're going to use the main item. Let's twine it up. So here I'm showing that I cut a long string of twine, double string. So to be able to keep the loop, so that loop will help me to keep uh, the string on the frame just like that all right so i'm basically going to continue doing that with the rest of the frame so now we have all the strings on the frame so here is the foam part and i'm going to try my best to explain so i'm going to be leaving one string on the side and then grab the next two strings make a loop in my finger and tie a knot and I will continue doing that with the rest of the strings now for the second line I'm going to start with the first string that we left from the beginning and then grab the second string and repeat the same step and keep going until you finish the entire the strings And you will end it up with something like that. I think it looks beautiful already. So now we have to attach it on the other part on the other part of the frame just by put it through the frame and then add a little bit of hot glue and then wrap around one or two times and then bring back the strings to the inside part and make a double knot. I also going to be adding a little bit of hot glue before I tie the first knot as you can see. So like that the knot will keep in place. So now I just going to be making another knot. Tie it and then cut the excess. So I will continue doing that with the rest of the strings. absolutely beautiful i just love it so now i'm going to do the same process with the rest of the box except the bottle part the bottle part we're going to do something different so i have all the little nets ready now i'm just going to be attached on the bottle so i just stop in here just to show you how it looks like and also they can you personalize how you like it using a uh, placing on different direction the bottle part of the net but i went for the flat or a straight look 
and I think it looks gorgeous already. So now we're going to be working with the bottom part of the basket. So here I just flip it over, I grab it another long string of twine and make it really tight knot. So now I'm going to be doing the figure eight pattern until I cover the entire bottom part. And you will end it up with something like that. I think it looks so cute. So now for the final uh, string, I just add some of the hot glue on the bottle and then the rest of the string, I brought it inside and make a double knot and voila. Now, at this point, this basket looks almost complete and you can just leave it as it. But uh, after I burned the little fussy things, I went ahead and add more twine around the top part just to reinforce the frames. And like that, it's going to be more sturdy and not to be worried about the canvas fall apart. So yeah, I did that in both sides and I think now is perfect i think it came out absolutely beautiful you can use this basket as a decoration with a little blanket on it or a little pillow just to decorate the home or just for organizing like on the bathroom you can put some magazine on it or even toilet paper and i think it looks really nice on top of the toilet so but in here i'm just showing and that i placed that envelopes you can also do that just organize your mail and it looks really nice so endless ideas or just add some greenery on top and it looks gorgeous so i really hope you guys enjoy it and let me know what you guys think To start, I want to apologize if I'm congested. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather these past few days. I'm sorry if I am even harder to understand. <laughs> so let's get started. So for a first DIY, I will be using some of the fun items that I got. And as you can see, that wooden shelf is really nice. So I'm just going to be removing the plastic first and then i also going to be removing the string out of the little shelf just like so So once I have removed the strings, now I'm just going to be saving uh, the strings for the next DIY. And for now, I'm just going to use some of those dowels, also from Dollar Tree, and just place it on it. Those fit just right on the holes of that little shell. So I just add some hot glue, and there you have it. So now we basically have the base of the launder that we're going to create. So I'm going to be using the raffia scarf, <laughs> Hawaiian scarf, I don't know, hula hoop I call it, but I, I might say it wrong. So uh, first I'm going to be untying the ends to make sure that I will have enough to cover the entire frame. So I'm going to be doing that, as you can see. And then when I had untie the ends, I'm going to try to separate the raffia on the string to be able to see how much I had and if I had enough to cover the entire frame. I 
and now I'm going to be using some hot glue and just add some on the corners just to be able to keep in place the strings and then just play around until I got the entire raffia attached on the frame I went ahead and spread it out uh, a little bit the raffia uh, strings as you can see and then add her glue to be able to keep it in place so I will be doing that with the entire frame so I have all the raffia ready to go but before I start to creating a design I went ahead and cut two more pieces of dowels and place it in each side to have better control of the shape of the dowels when I start to add in the strings so as you can see the design that I'm going to be doing here is really simple all I'm going to be doing is just doing it crosses so I started with the corner and then just bring that string to the other corner creating that cross or X so I will be repeating that with the entire frame so I did that with both sizes the larger sizes first and then for the edges we're going to be doing something different so when I was done with that I realized that I have extra on one side so I thought it's okay because that will, will help me to create a another design for the lantern so I went ahead and did a braid So I did two braids in there and then with that braid I'm going to basically wrapping around the entire lantern and that definitely will give you a better nice finished look. But before I do that I'm going to be finishing the, the sizes of the lantern so as you can see we have a lot of lead over. So here I just show it and then I just grab each end and then just make it double knot cut excess and basically I'm going to be repeating the same thing over and over yes like so so once I was done with that that's how it looks like now we still have the other part of the side as you can see so I have actually six strings so I grab I made divisions of two and basically what I did was just wrapping around on my finger just to twist it a little bit to have better control of the raffia and then I just bring it up and then add a little bit of hot glue and then I just did like a double twister on the dowel that is on the top and then cut excess and then I will be doing the same thing with the rest of the strings once I had all complete I also add more dots of hard glue here and there just to keep the raffia in place so now I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other side once I have both sides complete now we're going to be using the braid that we did before and basically I'm just going to be wrapping around the edges and that will give a really nice finished look like I mentioned it before but I also is going to reinforce the dowels so as you can see uh, after I wrap it the entire lantern I still had a little lead over of the braid so I went ahead and make like a little loop and place it right on the front where it was a little gap and it's no gap anymore in there and voila so basically that is it for this one I think it came out absolutely beautiful it was a little bit challenging so here I'm just going to be adding the eucalyptus branch and just to add some little chic touch to the eucalyptus branch I'm just going to be adding some of this cute little ribbon and wrap around just a little bit the bottom of the stem so I just add a little bit of hot glue and voila and after that i just going to be placing it on the lantern and there you have it 
and basically that is it for this one i think it came out absolutely beautiful you can just change the greenery all year around or you can also use lead candles inside and it will look absolutely beautiful or even very light absolutely gorgeous so i really hope you guys enjoy it so let me know what do you guys think So here are the materials, mostly Dollar Tree items except the paint. So I'm going to start off by attaching those little boxes or Great, gratis, okay. <laughs> With wood glue and hot glue at the same time, just like so. Once I had the little boxes together, now I'm going to be adding the large dowels right on the corner, but only on the back part as you can see next i add the third dowel right on top to create like a frame or like a stand kind of thing as you can see So now I'm going to be using some Jenga blocks but for this step you can also use wooden beads or even uh, the mini cubes from Dollar Tree to create like a fit but I was going for the chunky look so I went ahead and used the little Jenga blocks and placed it right on the bottom part just like so. Alright, this next step I think is also optional. I just want to have a better finished look and I chose so much the seams in between the boxes. So I went ahead and used some popsicle stick, cut it and just covered those seams. But at the same time, I'm going to be using the same popsicle sticks in each corner to create like an angle or L kind of thing and cover that and have better finished look like I mentioned it before. Once I had done the corners, as you can see, I went ahead and added another piece of popsicle stick right on the top to cover that seam too. 
So now it's time to add some paint so you can add any paint or any color you want but I'm showing in here what I used it was just regular white chalk paint. So now we're going to leave our box or stand on the side for a little bit and create some details. So I got those plastic hearts that come in a package of three. I have used one already on the Twine It Up Challenge. If you haven't watched that video, I will leave the link in my description box below. Thank you so much for all the ones who joined me on this new adventure. So I removed the material that come on it and also removed the little spiky things. So um, basically all I did was just add a little bit of chalk paint just to blend it out the color and also add some red color. Alright, once I was done with that, I went ahead and grabbed a piece of paper and just cut a heart just to make like a background on my heart as you can see and then just hard glue it. I also add one of those wooden stickers and place it right on the center as you can see so i also going to be using some of the pearls but before that i'm going to add some of the red paint and just make a little dot on the white heart as you can see so i grab a piece of twine and just put it through the hole on the heart as you can see and then i'm going to be putting one of the pearls right in one side of the twine and make a double knot and just pull it as you can see and then I add the rest of the pearls on the other side of the twine, as you can see. I love how this little heart turned out. The pearls just give it that special touch on it, don't you think so? So now it's time to bring back the box or the base that we just did and hang the heart right on top on the middle. So I add a dot the hard glue just to keep the twine in place and then just wrapping around the rest of the twine and voila. At this point I think the heart looks so cute as it is but I thought something else was missing and I went ahead and make a cute little bow. And then I just add a little bit of hot glue and place it right on top of the wooden heart. So next I'm going to be using one of those galvanized sides. Uh, I removed that one from an other side, a big heart, uh, that I'm eventually going to be using on another DIY and just paint it in red. And just add some hot glue and place it right on front of the boxes but you can also use E6000. And now it's time to decorate or fill the box. So I'm going to use those cute roses. I really like that color. Uh, but I can fill it with something else like I'm showing in here with those little hearts. So um, like I said, I'm using roses. So I went ahead and removed them from the uh, stem and also removed the leaves as you can see. So to be able to place the roses on the boxes, I'm going to be using some leftover styrofoam and just cut it and place it on. I also decided to add some greenery so all I did was cut the stem as well and place it right on the back of the flowers or roses. I just love it. I think the greenery give you that really fresh look. I also added some little fairy lights with some hearts on it and I think that really made it look so romantic, so cute. So I show in here two ways. I put it on top of the roses and I think it looks so adorable but I also show um, by placing the little lights right on top of the frame that we made and I think it looks so cute as well. But you guys let me know which one you prefer. So that is it for this one.
If this is your first time in my channel, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome. Quick and easy DIYs on the budget are my favorite. If that interests in you, I would love to consider and subscribe and be part of this family just by hitting the subscribe button, also the bell, and you will get notified every time I upload a new video and you won't miss anything. Here are the materials. So I'm going to start off by putting together those three pieces. As you can see, I'm using the popsicle sticks and also the leftover holder napkins from fall, I think it was. I had two little pumpkins on it, so I used the pumpkins, but I saved the base. So here we go. I'm going to be cutting the popsicle sticks to be able to create a box. So I measure it down and cut it. So once I had cut it, I went ahead and just sent the edges and smooth it out a little bit. So now I'm going to be gluing the popsicle stick using wood glue and hot glue at the same time. Yes, like so. So I ended up with a little cute box. So now I'm going to attach the little box that we just made on top of the large side using wood glue and hot glue as well. So once I had the pieces attached together, I went ahead and gave it a really good coat with the white chalk paint. Now the base is ready to decorate. Look at how cute this base turned out. You can just have it like that and add a little planters on it and it will look so cute as well. But uh, we're doing Valentine and we're going to decorate this cute large sign and I'm going to give it a really good coat with the red acrylic paint. Once the paint was dry, now I'm going to use some white acrylic paint and use the bottom of the brush and made some dots on. And I ended up with something like that. I think it looks so adorable. So now I'm going to place it right on top of the base that we just made. Uh, trace the spaces where I'm going to be adding the glue. Add the glue and then place the sign on top. Hold it for a little bit and voila. And for the final touch, I'm going to be using those stator from hers. So I'm going to give you a good coat with the red paint, as you can see. Next, I'm going to add some of the black paint just on the edge, just to highlight it a little bit and give you like a distressed look at the same time. Yes, like so. So those little hearts look so cute already, but I thought something else is missing and I'm using pearls on those DIYs. So I went ahead and add some on the skewers as well. So once I was happy with the weight of the Pearl's look, I went ahead and add a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place and don't move around. And then I'm going to be just cutting a little bit of stem to be able to place it on the little box that we just did. Okay, to be able to keep those little hearts on the box, I'm going to be using a little over the state of fun and place it right on it.
and then I add a little piece of fabric that I have around just to give you more detail and also cover some of the state of form. And that is it for this one. Here are the materials, mostly Dollar Tree items, except the paint. So floral pig and one of those large tag, a wooden hello sign, poster letters, a little wire basket, and also some ribbon. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by removing the tag and also the ribbon or little bow on the top, just like so. Next, I'm going to use some masking tape to be able to paint in two colors the tag. So I went ahead and just measured it down to know exactly where I'm going to put the tape and then just place the tape on it, as you can see. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use it two colors. So I have this beautiful charcoal color uh, by Rustolian and also some white acrylic paint. So I went ahead and paint the white part first, as you can see, and then I removed the masking tape, but at the same time, I'm going to reuse the masking tape with the clean part and put it back again on the white part to be able to paint the other side. Just like so, use the heat gun for a quick process, and there you have it. Now, I'm going to be using a little brush to fix the spaces, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to use some ribbon to cover that and just to give you some details to the tag. So once I have the tag ready, now I'm going to use a little wire basket and I'm going to place it right on the bottom part. So to be able to do that, I had to uh, use the drill and make some holes. So all I'm going to be doing in here is just place the basket on the bottom as a guide and use the pencil to mark it down as you can see. And then I'm going to use the drill to make the holes. All right, now it's time to add the little basket on the tag. To be able to do that, all I had to do is use some zip ties and just place it through the holes to the basket in the holes that we just did on the tag. And voila! So after I cut the tags, I went ahead and added a little bit of hot glue just to smooth it out that part and don't scratch the wall or something. So although I will say uh, you can also add the brown paper on the back to have, to have better finished look. So now I'm going to be placing a hello side right on the top. I'm not going to paint it. I'm going to leave it as it is and then it's spelling the word spring right on the bottom with the poster letters. I'm going to be using this cute ribbon that we used at the beginning and I'm going to just weave in a little bit right on the top part of the basket just to add some details. Look how cute. So as you can see on the end, all I did was just use the same holes of the basket, uh, put a couple times through the holes and then just cut excess and hard glue. I really love how this little basket looks already. So now all I'm going to be doing is making a double bulb by using the 
buffalo check ribbon and also a burlap ribbon uh, put it together and then adding tied it i tied it after by place it right on the basket as you can see by using a small zip tie and voila all right so now it's time just to add some flowers and we are almost done so i have this less over or recycle styrofoam from packages they have some plastic on it and i thought that was so perfect so i went ahead and just cut a little piece and placed it right on the bottom now i'm going to use those cute roses from dollar tree cut it from the bushes and just place it right the way i was pictured in my head <laughs> so i place the largest roses right on the back and then I place the bigger roses next to it and some greenery so after I add all the roses on it, I'm going to be using this burlap ribbon and cover the bottom part of the basket to be able to cover the state of fun. So I didn't want it the entire ribbon, so I fold it in half and then place it right on the bottom of the basket, just like so. So then I realized the greenery part of the Roses or the stems are still showing up. So I went ahead and removed just the roses on the front and add a little bit of a Spanish moss and then place back the roses. And basically that is it for this one. And I think it came out absolutely beautiful. The good thing about this project is that you can just change the roses, add some carrots, some eggs for easter and just change the spring side and just add easter and will look absolutely beautiful and perfect for the spring or easter so let me know what do you guys think For my next DIY, I'm going to use that Valentine's side, also some lavenders from Dollar Tree, and the same charcoal paint that we used before. Also, these other uh, flowers that I don't know the name, <laughs> I removed the tag and I don't remember the name. So now I'm just going to pull it apart the side, as you can see, and then I'm going to remove the little galvanized hearts as well. So now I'm going to also repurpose those signs that I got on fall, I believe. Uh, yeah, so I went ahead and add some hot glue and attached both together, as you can see. Now I'm going to be attaching the other two parts that we just pulled apart and place it in each side using hot glue as well. I ended up with a little box now to cover the sizes of the bags I'm going to be repurposing some jumbo popsicle sticks as I say I have used it before that's why they are painted in white so I mark it down and then I'm going to be using the scissors cut it and then proceed to place it right in each side just by using high glue as you can see So the little box is actually complete. Now I'm going to use some chalk paint and the color charcoal and give it really good coat. So after the paint was dry, I'm going to be using some sandpaper and smooth it out the edges and get some distressed look at the same time. Just like so. Alright, the little box is ready, so I'm going to leave it on the side for a little bit and I'm going to use this home side that has a little light on it, but on my way home, I broke one of them, so I'm going to use the broken one by using only the front part. 
so I went ahead and give a really good coat with a white acrylic paint and then I just going to be placed it right in one side of the box as you can see using hard glue and voila look how cute the good thing about this box you can use it all year around but we are getting ready for the spring so I'm going to be using some cute lavenders and I have left over the styrofoam as I mentioned it before I'm going to just cut in a couple pieces and place right inside of the little box just like so and then I'm going to use some moss add some hot glue on the bottle just to keep it in place and I'll be making a lot of mess around the house <laughs> so and then just ready to go to add the flowers as you want it so I cut the stems as you can see and then I just start placing it on the box however I would like it however they go I was just playing around with and I ended up with something like that and I just love it I think it came out so cute uh, it looks so beautiful and I just love it the idea of this centerpiece because you can change it all get around with different florals uh, or you can even add some jars inside and it looks just beautiful main items so here I'm showing two different kinds scissor twine and jute twine so for this project I also going to be using some dowels big dowels from Walmart some charger plates from Dollar Tree and some recycled hot sauce cups also bamboo skewers and some left over foam now I'm going to use the coaster to trace it down to little circles and then use the side cutter to cut them So once I had the circle cut, I'm going to be saving one for later on and other one I just going to use some hot glue and place it right on the middle of the charger plate. Now I'm going to be placing the skewers on the circle that we just glue on the plate. So that will just pocket on it and there you have it. Alright, I'm going to continue doing that and at the same time adding that hot glue to keep it in place. So once I was did the first row, I cut the excess and then the extra I just placed it in between the spaces and I ended up with something like that. Now I'm going to be using the twine and basically fill it up the entire circle. Now that we have the center complete, we're going to start to waving the twine on the skewers. So here I'm just going to do a closer view so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm leaving one skewer in between and just and then just keep repeating the same step. Alright, once you have some amount of waving like that, now we're going to add more twine. So now we're going to be changing waving. So it's kind of hard to explain this step. So I'm going to let the video explain it for me. And look how beautiful that looks already. So now I'm going to be adding more twine, but this time thicker twine. And we're going to be changing waving as well. So once I have done like six rounds until I complete the gap in between the uh, plate, now I'm just going to be wrapping around normal until I complete the entire plate as you can see all right i know this project looks like a lot of work but I, yes it does take a lot of time but uh, i promise you the results are amazing this project came out absolutely beautiful i just can't wait to share with you the rest all right once i have finished the entire plate you can see that we still have the gap but the idea was to cover the bottle so won't show so much the color of the plate you can also spray paint it before so now i'm going to use the silicone mat to make little circles 
So as you can see, I placed the hot glue and started twisting around until I got the circles that I want. So I made a bunch of those. Now I'm just going to be adding some hot glue and place it around where we have the gap. And look at that. I think it looks beautiful already. So we're going to leave, leave that plate on the side for a little bit. And we're going to start wrapping around more twine on the silicone mat to start to cover the other charger plate. So with this one, I'm basically going to wrap around the entire plate just like so. Right, when I went to the other side of the plate I'm just going to be using some burlap fabric and place it on so I just used leftovers and I just cut it now I'm just going to be add some hard glue and voila all right I like to have a nice finished look so I'm going to be using more twine to cover the edges and there you have next I'm just going to be using the lighter just to burn those little fussy things on the twine I just love the color that lighter give them and also love the smell look how beautiful so now with one of the plates I'm going to be using that specific tool and I'm going to be making some holes on it but you can also use the pointy bar of the glue gun to do this process all right we're going to leave that plate on the side for a little bit and i'm going to use the big dowels and basically what i'm going to be doing in here is wrapping around with one so i will be doing that with four of them All right, we have all the pieces ready to go. So as you can see, what I'm going to be doing in here is like a little table or a little two-tier tray. So yeah, but before I start to attaching all the pieces together, I'm going to be placing those wooden cups as a feet. So next I'm just going to be adding some hot glue in each towel and place it on it and then I'm going to reinforce them using another piece of twine and place it through the holes that we did and wrapping around a couple times and make double knots. So next, I'm going to be attaching all the ends of the dowels together. So next, to be able to create a flat surface on the top, I add a little cube and then a pieces of popsicle sticks that I have around. So then I'm just going to be cutting the excess of the twine and also adding more hot glue around just to make sure that that little table don't go anywhere. So once I was ready to place the top part, I went ahead and add a lot of hot glue and place it on it. But you can also use E6000 or on the kind of glue. And that is it for this one. I think it came out absolutely beautiful. But I always want to know what you guys think.
Okay, for our first DIY, I'm going to be making some beautiful sconces and oh my goodness, I think they came out so cute and I'm really excited to show you how I did it. So here are the materials and like I said, mostly Dollar Tree items. So I'm going to start off by removing the plastic on those frames. I like those frames as they are. I think they are really cute. Those are new for me on Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use only the frames. So I went ahead and removed everything on it. Okay, once I have removed everything on the frames, now I'm going to be using my child paint and the color Queen Chiffon and give it really good coat on it. So once the paint was ready, the frames looks like that and I'm going to leave it on the side for a little bit and I'm going to be using or repurposing those plastic that come on the wooden rollers from the tree that I you guys know that I have used so many times on my previous DIY and here we go I did a huge mess I didn't realize that I have my paint open already and yep yeah, when I was trying to show <laughs> what kind of paint I was going to use that's what happened so yep uh -huh, here I am cleaning my mess <laughs> so once the paint was dry that's how the little plastic looks like and now we're going to make a little design on the frames so here i'm going to be measuring down to know where i'm going to cut cut the first piece and then cut the rest of the size using the first piece as a guy just like so Now it's time to attach all the pieces together to create the design on the frame. So I'm going to be using my little tiny glue gun, the Surbon that sent to me and oh my goodness they are so amazing and so easy to work with. I just love the little drip uh, for precision and you don't have extra hard glue all over. I just love it. So thank you Surbon for the glue guns. So now we have the back of the frame complete and I think it looks so pretty. So I'm going to be doing the same with the other frame. Okay, now I have both frames ready. So I'm going to leave it on the side just for a little bit and I'm going to be making the bottom part of the sconces. Dollar Tree carry those cute little frames that come with a little extra part on the top and that works perfect for this project so I'm going to be tracing down where I'm going to be cutting to be able to place the other frame right on it so as you can see I just trace the line with the pencil and now I just go to use the box cutter trace the line a couple times in both sizes and then just bend it and voila there you have it <laughs> so then I just go to send it a little bit just to smooth it out the edges just like so so then I'm just going to give it a really good coat with the same chalk paint and the color charcoal. And now that we have all the pieces ready to go, it's time to assemble. And if you ask me, this is my favorite part on every single DIY when I had to attach everything together and bring the DOI alive <laughs> I just love that so yeah I'm using hot glue in here but you can also use wood glue I didn't use a wood glue this time because I'm using my staple gum and I'm using the brown nails to reinforce so I think with that that was just enough
and look how beautiful and we almost done with this one so here i'm showing that you can use the bases that i got from dollar tree and just leave it like that it's simple and i think it looks beautiful as it is but i decided to add some of this uh beautiful ribbon that i got from uh, burla fabric that Con sent to me last time and oh my goodness i just love it because you can just decorate anything with so i went ahead and cut two strips and then just place it right on the top as you can see using a little bit of hard glue and for the final touch i also made two cute little bows using the same ribbon and place it right on top and basically that is it for this one and oh my goodness i think those came out so cute so you can decorate it however you want you can even add flowers on it you can use fairy lights or just regular candles and i think it will look so pretty i decorate my just with regular candles but i can just later on change it for something else and i just love it so that is it for this one and just let me know what you guys think. So for the next DIY, you will need a galvanized base from Dollar Tree, some wooden beads. Uh, I'm here showing some stickers, but I ended up not using it, and the same plastic from the ruler. So first, I'm going to be removing the hanger part on the galvanized base, and also removing the sticker on it. So I got the little heat gun, so to make it easy. And yeah, but you have to be really careful with because you can easily get burned. Alright, I still have some of the stickiness on it, so I went ahead and grabbed some acetone in a cotton ball and just clean it. Alright, now it's ready to go to add some paint. So I'm gonna use the same chiffon cream from Rustolian and give it really good coat. As you can see, I didn't really worry about the inside part. So I left the part just like that because you were not able to see it. Alright, then I'm going to be painting more of the <laughs> plastic rules. As you can see, using the chalk paint and the colored charcoal. So now I'm going to be creating like a little design in here. I don't know exactly the name for this. So I'm going to be placing the straps uh, in very way first. And as you can see, I'm not uh, gluing the second strip only because I'm using that as a guide to be able to keep the same distance in between strips. So once I had all the strips glued, I went ahead and cut the excess. And then I'm going to be doing the same step but I go in the strips in a horizontal way just like so look how beautiful so then I'm just going to be yeah, um, basically distressing a little bit the edges using the leftover paint on my brush. So now we're going to leave the planter right on the side for a little bit and I'm going to be making a little hanger. So I'm going to use the wooden beads and I have showed this technique a while ago like around Christmas time how to paint the beads easier using a Ziploc bag. You just dump it in there and, and then you just rub the little beads on the paint the same way you marinate chicken. 
it's exactly the same way <laughs> and then you take it out use the blow dryer or just the heat gun for a quick process so now i'm just going to use some twine to make the little hangers so here i was having a little hard time with the twine so i went ahead and grab a little masking tape and place it on it and voila <laughs> string the beads and there you have it and then i just cut the string and we have a little handle now i'm going to be making two little holes right on the top of the thing so to be able to do that i'm um, here i'm going to be showing two ways the way i did it so first i went ahead and grabbed a little nail and also a piece of tape and place it uh, where I did the mark and then use the hammers. So this what I did was just did the dent and then I used the pointy part of the scissors and basically uh, create the hole. <laughs> and there you have it. Then I used the hammer to flat it out uh, some of the pointy parts. So next I just add the hanger part on it and make a double knot and voila! So after I added the handle I think this planter looks beautiful as it is right now. So here I'm showing that I'm going to be placing some lavenders that I found on um, Walmart. I've, I bought it on Walmart a while ago. Um, but a Dollar Tree also carries some cute lavenders, so I place it on it. I also, I always like to cut the stem to be able to work better with. <laughs> so, but then I thought something else was missing, and I went ahead and make a cute little bow with the same uh, burlap ribbon that we used before. Place it on it, and voila! And look how cute. So that is it for this one. But I also going to be showing. In here, another option that I did using uh, only eucalyptus. three also some acrylic paint and some chalk paint in a color chiffon cream also i'm going to be using some let over galvanized stars that i have from previous diys and also some wooden stars so first i'm going to be removing the labels and also the hanger part as you can see Once I had removed all the stuff on the sides, now it's time to attach them together using popsicle sticks. I also add some, some tacky glue in between the crease. So now it's time to add some paint and yeah, I'm going to be using the chiffon cream and give it really good coat on. So the paint is dry and now it's time to add some designs. So I'm going to be making the flag so I trace the line using another sign. So I counted and I did 13 stripes. And then I'm going to be tracing a frame right on one side. So I play I trace one line first and then I just went over with the blue acrylic paint. And I did give it two really good coats to have a really nice color now with the stripes i'm going to be using the red and i did have a lot of fun painting this flag 
I'm making this flag for my husband's office and I think they turned out so pretty and he was so happy with. So the stars I painted in white and then I went over with some antique wax and then I just used high glue to place it on the blue frame. Now for give it that really nice vintage look to the flag I used the empty wax and went over the edges first and then I spread it out the rest uh, just to give it that really nice um, old look to the flag then I just going to be cover the back just to have better presentation if you're making a DIY for somebody make sure you cover the mess on the back and made it look nice and clean so this one like I say was a present for my husband so I went ahead and covered the back using some using some chalkboard paper that I have around but it doesn't necessarily have to be that you can also use brown paper it will look really nice as well all right once I was done with that basically that was there for this one and I think it came out absolutely beautiful my husband was really pleased with that one and that really made my day so let me know what you guys think Before to move on to the next DIY, I also want For the next DIY, you also will need another large size and also some of those letters from Dollar Tree. So I did remove everything on it, including the heart. But don't throw it away, we might need it later on. So then I just give it a really good coat with the same paint, chalk paint, and then I distress it with some antique wax. So as you can see those sides has like some creases on it so I placed the empty wax on it and then I spread it out and went over with a baby wipe and I think that really looks so nice and then back and forth with the same brush you know sometimes we go heavy <laughs> all right so I let it dry and then I'm going to be removing those letters from the hanging thing and then I just going to be giving really fresh paint with this some acrylic paint so yeah but before that I went ahead and removed some of the glitter because that those letters really come with a lot of glitter so it does really look really nice when you add the paint on top because it gives you really nice texture to the paint so I painted with the blue only and then I went back with some of the empty wax and also some of the white paint just to add some details to the letters. Now it's time to place it on the board and all I'm going to be doing is using hard glue and there you have it. As you can see, I left some space to be able to add some details. So I had so many leftover galvanized hearts and also some of the ones that come with burlap. So I went ahead and paint one of the galvanized with the red color and then use the burlap one and place it right on the bottle just to lay it up and I think it came out so cute. Right, so it still has some space on the other side so I'm going to be adding some twine around you guys know that I love twine so of course we had to add some twine on the projects I think it looks beautiful and basically that is it for this one I think it came out absolutely beautiful but I like I say I always want to know what you guys think let me know in the comments down below
Here's DIY. I'm going to be making a cute little farmhouse tray using Dollar Tree canvases. Plastic eggs, acrylic paint, and also chalk paint. Okay, I'm going to remove the plastic using the scissor as you can see and then i'm going to remove all the staples so to be able to do that i use a knife so if you do use the knife please be really careful and also a little plier so once i had removed all the staples i went ahead and grabbed only the frames and i'm going to be saving the canvas for another diy and another time <laughs> so now as you can see uh, the back part of the canvas has the little holes from the staples so i'm going to use that part to be able to create the bottom part of the tray so i'm going to use a popsicle sticks size medium so then i apply the wood glue and i use another little stick to spread it out on the frame and at the same time also use some hot glue for a quicker process went ahead and place all these popsicle sticks and look how cute all right once i had the bottom part of the frame now i'm going to be using the drill and drill some holes on the corner so mark it down first as you can see and then i'm going to do just halfway what i mean is i'm not going to do the hole completely to the other side of the frame all right so i did that with the first frame and then with the second frame mark it down and did the holes completely as you can see and then I just wipe it out the dust all right now we are ready to build our little tray see here I'm showing that one frame has completely holes and the bottom frame doesn't it's halfway home Dollar Tree is carrying those little eggs for over two years already and every time I see them I always grab one or two packages. Okay, those eggs has a little hole right on the bottom but I'm going to be drilling a hole right on the top as well. So now all the eggs has the little holes on it and now I have some leftover bamboo skewers so I'm going to use those as a base or reinforcement of my tray so I went ahead add some hot glue place it right on the hole that we did on one of the frames and then put the egg through the skewers as you can see and repeat the same step with the rest of the eggs in each corner So once I had all the eggs and a skewer on the first frame, that's how it looks like. Now we're going to be placing the second frame right on the top using the same skewers. That's why we did a completely hole on the second frame. All right. Now it seems like a tray, right? <laughs> I went ahead, add more hot glue and don't worry because it won't look messy. After get it dry, I went ahead and cut the excess of the skewers just like so. And look how cute this little tray looks already. A sturdy tray. Okay, we're going to use the same paper and send it out the pointy parts on the top from the skewers and also remove the excess of the Alright, once that was ready, now it's time to add some paint and I'm going to be using the chalk paint and the color chiffon cream. Once the paint was dry, that's how it looks like and I just love it at this point. You can just leave it as it is and I think it looks perfect. I was going for a distressing look so I went ahead and used the antique wax and use a little piece of cloth and just wipe it out all over and distress it as I want it. I also added some of the yellow acrylic paint just to add more texture to the tray and basically that is it for this one and I think it came out absolutely beautiful. You can use it all year around on the kitchen with different items it will be just perfect 
kitchen decor absolutely beautiful but i always want to know what you guys think so please let me know in the comment down below So for the next DIY, I'm going to be using some plungers, three plungers to be exact. One I have used already, so that's why it's cut and painted. And some little bunnies that I believe I got it in a flea market or a garage sale. All right. So I have done something similar on the past uh, with plungers and also some um, sponge brush sticks so i'm going to be removing the little labels first so i went ahead and used my little hican i'm so excited with my hican i recently got it and i've been using it like crazy and oh my goodness it saved me a lot of time <laughs> all right so then i just grab the same paper and it's smoothed out some of the stickiness that's still on the plungers now as you can see some of those plungers they are not the same size so i'm going to be cutting the ends uh, with my mire my box so i always like to use masking tape to keep my pieces together and don't be having accidents with <laughs> so yeah i did that as you can see i'm going to be saving those little pieces because i might use it on another diy soon <laughs> so and then i just smoothed out the edges again with the same paper now i'm just going to be mark it down in some distance in between i think it was five centimeters each um to be able to place the middle part now in this case i'm going to be using hot glue but you can also use wood glue or another kind strong glue but i use high glue only because i'm going to be using some nails and i thought that was enough in for the purpose that i'm going to be using a little ladder so but uh, like i said you can always use other kind of glue and will be sturdy so once i had the middle part attached it now i'm going to be adding the nails using my little hammers and voila I also forget to mention it, that I have used the drill on one of the middle parts and I create two little holes on it to attach the little hooks where I'm going to be hanging my little marks. But before that, I'm going to be give it really good coat with the chalk paint as you can see. And then I'm going to be repeating the same process that I did before with the empty wax just to stress it and give it that really nice rustic look. Yes, like so. And here I just go back with the leftover white child paint because I have heavy hands and sometimes I just add so much paint. <laughs> Let me know if you are the same. Okay, then I just add the little hooks on it and look how cute. I'm going to leave that ladder on the side just for a little bit and I'm going to be working with these cute little bunnies. And first I'm just going to be kind of adding some of the chalk paint to blend it out some of the, the original colors on it. So the little bunny is going to have a yellow shirt so I went ahead and just I grabbed my little brush and paint the little shirts on it. So I grabbed some of the color gray granite uh, from Apple Barrel and just paint the little uh, tails, the feet and also the ears. And look how adorable. I just love it. And we basically done with this one. All I'm going to be doing is just adding some hot glue and place the right one on the bottle and right on the top. And voila. I just love it. I think it came out so cute. But I always want to know what do you guys think so please let me know the materials and i'm going to be using dollar tree christmas little truck and also some leftover popsicle sticks and in some fun colors acrylic paint as you can see i have removed all the glitter on the truck already now i'm just going to remove the hanger part
Next, I'm going to be using the lighter blue and the darker blue on the truck. So, by the way, those paints are for the company plate. So, I will leave the link on the description box below if you are interested. This is my first time using different colors on my projects and I did have a lot of fun, such a happy colors. So yeah, I added like blue first and then the rings or I think it's the fender of the truck, I used the darker blue. And then I just distressed it a little bit the edges and also add some of the char charcoal color on the tires just to add more dimension to the little truck. So once I was done with that, I'm going to leave it on the side just for a little bit. So now with this little chalkboard, I'm going to remove the little piece on the back, but I'm going to be using later on and just give it good coat with the same color. So the darker blue on the frame and the lighter blue on the center. So once I was done with the little frame, I left it on the side and now I'm going to be using the leftover popsicle sticks and paint it with two different light pinks, just like so. So I have all the pieces ready to go, so I'm going to be just putting together the little project. So as you can see, I'm going to be making an ice cream truck. So I placed the pink pieces on the frame and then I just going to place the other frame on the truck and look at that and like I say the other extra piece going to be as a reinforcement right on the back and voila look at that cute little ice cream truck so now I'm just going to add some details so I paint a little round circle that I have around so those going to be lollipops <laughs> And look how cute. So now I'm going to be using some stickers and spell ice cream. The ice cream truck is almost ready, but we need a little cone. So I had this little feet from a previous DIY from a side. And yeah, that was a bunny feet. You saw that. So I draw a little cone and paint it. And now I'm just going to be placing right on top of the truck just to add more details to the little truck. I just love it. That is it for this one. And I think it came out so adorable. But I would love to know what you guys think. So please let me know in the comments down below. Before to move on to the next DIY, if this is your first time in here, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome. This project is quick and easy and so cute as well. I had this little guy for Easter, but uh, I didn't have the time to use it. <laughs> so I'm going to be removing the ears as you can see. So I trace it down and then with the box cutter, trace the couple times, fold it and there you have it. So then I'm just going to be using a scissor to smooth it out the edges and also using same paper as I say to smooth it out the edges. I also going to be removing the little eggs as you can see. Once I have removed the eggs now I'm going to be tracing a line and cut it as well the bottom part. And I also going to be making like a little arrangement in there to create like a little lollipops or icicles. I think that's the name for. <laughs> so once I was done with that, now I'm going to be using some popsicle sticks and I also remove the little nose. Now, before I start to attach all together, we had to paint it. So I give a really good coat with the chiffon cream to all the pieces. Now is the fun part. I'm going to use the marker to trace it down where I'm going to be adding the different colors. So I start on the top with the darker pink and also the feet. So next with the lighter blue, I'm going to be painting the belly or the body. Okay, <laughs> as you can see, and place by the little nose. Now we're going to be painting the lollipops with different colors. <laughs> so I use the blue, the pink, and also the light green. And look how cute. So then I'm just going to be add some little lights just to add some details with a little thin brush and a dark gray. 
and also highlighted the edges with the little market and look how cute so now it's just time to add the little popsicle sticks so i cut it in half and then i just going to be painted with the chalk paint and the color charcoal yes like so so once i have the popsicles ready now i'm just going to be using hot glue and attach them once i have all ready now i'm just going to place it back on the little guy and we have some stickers so i spell sweet summer and look how cute and basically that is it for this one i think it came out so adorable so let me know what you guys think all right for our next diy here are the materials drawing zip ties and also i'm going to use one of the circles of the garden uh thing that i found on the lottery i think it's for tomatoes all right i don't know even know the name for that but yeah one of those so i'm going to use the larger circle and then i'm going to grab another circle from a small reef that i have around to be able to have the same size but I also I want one a little bit softer to manage better with the twine all right so now I just going to remove the circle so once I had the circle removed now I'm going to just wrapping around with twine just like so So now we have the ring wrapped. Now I'm going to use the zip ties. So here I'm going to be making the loops just like so. Just put it together as you can see. And I'm going to be doing that with the rest of the zip ties. Once I have all the zip ties made it as a loop, now I'm going to be using the twine. And basically I'm going to be wrapping around each one of them. So the easy way is just add some hot glue right on top and then just keep wrapping around until you finish all of it. This uh, can take some time but uh, what I normally do is just bring my projects to the backyard, uh, bring the boys outside so they can play around and then I just can sit and do my twine. <laughs> So once I had all the zip ties tied, now I'm just going to be cutting the excess. I didn't cut that at the beginning just to be able to have something to hold it. So now we have the pieces wrapped with twine and it's time to place them together or attach them together. So I'm going to be using twine but at first I'm going to be making a cute design inside of the ring so with the rounded part of the little hoops i'm going to be placed it right in the ring just like so so to make it easy or have an even part of, i place force first a uh, facing a uh, together and like that i will have I will be just eyeballing the space in between and just filling with the rest of the loops just like so. So now we have this beautiful design and then I realized that I need something round on the middle. So I went ahead and grabbed a curtain ring and wrap it with twine. Now I'm just going to place it on the center and attach them using hot glue.
all right so next step i'm going to be cutting another piece of twine to be able to reinforce the little loop and the ring together So now we have a really nice and sturdy uh, tray. So I also place more loops facing up on top of the ring. So I didn't know why I didn't show that part here. I probably missed that little clip. <laughs> All right, so do you remember the second ring? So I went ahead and also. So now it's just time to attach the second ring on the tray. So to make it easy, I just grab the <laughs> tire tray and face it down so like that I will have better precision where I am going to add the hat glue Look how beautiful this little tray looks already. The tray is almost complete, but as you can see, the top part is still flimsy and not secure. So I'm going to add more twine in between the each hoop and the ring. So wrapping around a couple times and that definitely made the little tray firm and sturdy. And that is it for this one. I think this little tray came out absolutely beautiful. You can decorate it however you like it or you can just have it by yourself and I think it looks gorgeous. So but I always want to know what you guys think. All right, so let's get started. As I mentioned, it mostly Dollar Tree items except the fabric. I got the fabric from BurlaFabric.com and if you are interested, I can leave all the links on my description box below. All right, so here I'm basically cutting a piece and then I'm just going to remove the lace. If you have just lace, you don't need to do this step, all right? Once I had the lace cut, now I'm just going to be tracing my sign on it and then went ahead and cut it, just like so. Alright, once I had the lace cut, now I'm just going to leave it on the side for a little bit and we're going to be working with the sign. So I went ahead and removed the hanger part. Alright, now I have this cute color like a light pink. I got that for the company plate and i also going to leave the links as well. Alright, give it really light color on it and then I went ahead and just add some of the, my antique wax just to add some... Uh, character on it and made it look a little bit old. Alright, so remove the excess using a wipe. Alright, now it's time to attach the lace. And for this, I'm going to use the mosh pots. You can also use tacky glue or uh, fabric glue. So I went ahead and just placed the lace right on top. And then I add more mosh pots right on top just to secure that. All right, now I'm just going to add more embellishment to my side. I had those gems from Dollar Tree, so I cut some strips and then I'm just going to be adding all around this side, as you can see.
Oh my goodness, the side looks beautiful already with the gems. At this point, you can just leave it like that, and I think it looks so cute. But I'm going to be add more details on it. So Dollar Tree carry also those beautiful flowers I got it around in springtime. All right, so basically, I'm going to pull apart everything to be able to add my own earrings. So that is it for this one and I think it came out so cute but I always want to know what you guys think. Use that beautiful burlap runner with the lace on it. Thin burlap ribbon, Dollar Tree greenery, Dollar Tree large tag, and also some chalk paint. So I'm going to start by removing the little stars on it using a flat driver, as you can see. Then I'm going to use the same block to remove the extra glitter on the tag, just like so. And I also going to remove the hanger part. Next, I'm going to give it a really good coat with the chalk paint and the color chiffon cream. So now we are ready to decorate the tag and I'm going to be cutting a piece of this beautiful runner as you can see. So what I'm going to do is a little packet or a little bag. So I'm going to kind of fold it a little bit right on the bottle just to have an idea how much I want to, how much height I want the little bag. So once I was happy with that, I went ahead and just add hot glue and place the bottle part. Then I just going to grab the other side of the burlap and just add two dots of hot glue right on the top. Just to keep it in place and straight. Now with the leftover on the sizes, basically I'm going to do like a, you know, folding the edges or the corner to hide it like we do with when we're wrapping a present yeah this one in here is not working so i'm going to explain you in here on the video so you can see exactly what i was trying to explain <laughs> and then i just secure it with the hard cord, just like so And now we have a little package or a little burlap bag and I think it looks so cute already. So I have this little tag around, I believe was part of my mailbox. <laughs> so yeah, I just going to be add some hot glue and place it right on. So that little tag has some little holes on it. So I went ahead and add some gem just to give it a little nice touch. Now with the chalk paint and I color charcoal, I'm going to be distressing a little bit the edges, just like so. So next I'm going to be using this small ribbon or thin ribbon and basically making a little loop and put it through the hole the tag has. Now this is not the hanger part, I'm just going to be adding this loop just to add some details to my tag. All right, now I'm going to cut another piece of ribbon and make another loop and this is going to be the hanger part.
Next, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to be making a simple bow and place it right on top, just like so. And I also add a little dot of hot glue on the tails just to keep it in place and cut the excess. And look how cute. And the tag, you can write anything you want. Now it's time to add the greenery. So I'm going to cut the stem, as you can see. But if you notice, the pocket is kind of flat. So I thought I can add something to make it more fluffy. So I went ahead and just add a plastic bag. Push it down with a pencil and then I just place the greenery. And I love it. What I love the most of this project is that you can change it all year around by using different flowers, different greenery, and writing something different on the tag. And voila, I think it came out so cute that is it for this one. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to be using one of those large size from Dollar Tree, a stencil that I purchased on Amazon a while ago, and also this beautiful linen ribbon from BoardLifeFabric.com. If you are interested to purchase some of the items from BoardLifeFabric.com, I will leave the link on my description box below, so make sure you go check it out. So back to the DIY, I'm going to be removing everything on the large side, the little galvanized heart, and also the hanger part. So once I removed the staple, I also went ahead and sanded it a little bit. So then I'm going to give it a really good coat with a chalk paint and a color sheet from cream both sizes. So once the paint was dry, now I'm going to be using the linen ribbon and also my stencil. So what I'm going to do in here is basically cut the ribbon using the stencil as a guide. I left half inch extra. Then I will be attaching the ribbon on the board with tacky glue. And now my favorite part, I'm going to be adding the stencil using chalk paint and a color charcoal. So I always use a little piece of uh, tape just to keep the stencil in place. And are you ready? Ta-da! <laughs> How beautiful. So I use the heat gun just for a quick process and then with some leftover paint on the brush, I went ahead and just distressed the edges. And look how cute. And at this point, I think it looks gorgeous as it is, but I'm going to be adding some greenery just to add more details and I'm also going to be making a little bow later on. So let's add some of the greenery right on the bottom of the letters just by using hot glue. So the greenery looks beautiful so just need a little touch and we are going to add a little bow just a simple bow place it on it add a little bit of hot glue and voila now the next step um i should have done that before i did the entire project but uh, sometimes that's how we do <laughs> now i'm just going to flip it over and add two little hangers using hot glue and basically that is it for this one and I think it came out so cute. So let me know in the comments down below.
Cut. Now I'm just going to be using the wedding top. Alright, so I'm going to hold down with the vinyl for a little bit and I'm just going to be working with the wood. Alright, so I'm going to be using this really bright orange color and it won't be like that. Alright, so I give it really good coat and let it dry. And then I'm going to use the antique wax and give it really good coat with the brush first. And then I'm going to grab a little towel and remove the excess and I ended up with such a beautiful color. I really love the color. Alright, so now it's time to place our design on it. So here I'm just going to be placing the transfer tape first. And then slowly I just going to be placing on it. Alright, a little tip for this uh, for projects like this one. As you can see, some of the paints coming off, but I didn't mind because it made it look the side like weather or oh, oh. all. <laughs> Alright, so it looks really nice, but a little trick that you can do to avoid that step is just remove some of the sticky part of the transfer tape on a little towel and you will be fine so you will have no problems removing some of the paint i didn't mind i really like how this turned out and then i changed my mind and i ended up removing the a and placing the pumpkin right on the top and not on the bottom all right and there you have it all right and for the final touch for this beautiful sign i'm just going to be using some mash pots just to reinforce the letters and voila it look how gorgeous oh my goodness it looks it looks beautiful in my porch
all right so now we need to do the other side so i decided to do something for halloween so i just went to cricket space and spell happy halloween and then i also grab one of the little girls and i just placed it on it and once i was ready to make it i went ahead and just press the button and let the machine do the work all right we have our design card and it's time to use the weeding tool again once I was done with it, the design, I'm going to leave that design on the table for a little bit and we're going to work on the wood. So as you can see, uh, it's still plain so I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and a little bit of water and then just give it really good coat. Alright, the paint is dry and now it's my favorite part. Let's put our design on it and just have fun. I honestly had so much fun making those large signs for my porch. I really enjoy it. And we are basically done with our first reversible sign. All I did after was just add a little bit of mash brush on the edges of the letters just to reinforce the glue. Alright, and oh my goodness, I just love it. I just love it, love it, love it. I think it came out so cute. Alright, for the first DIY, you will need mostly Dollar Tree items except uh, the paint and also those few ornaments. Right? I'm also going to be repurposing those paint brushes handles and also some wooden beads. So first, I'm going to be removing all the succulents from the uh, triangles and also the little pen that come on it and all the glue as well. Then I'm going to be giving a really good coat with the white paint by Upper Barrel. Once I was done with that, now we're going to be working with the handles or dowels and basically cut in three different levels. I didn't really measure it, I just did it eyeballing and then used my my box and cut it. Then I smoothed out the edges with Dollar Tree sandpaper. And now it's time to paint all those pieces, the wooden bits and also those wooden planks that I found at Dollar Tree as well. And now my favorite part, let's assemble the pieces. So I start with the wooden bits. As you can see, first I did the wrench bit and then I went ahead and used the hot glue. But you can also use wooden glue. Alright, and then I'm going to place the other plank right on top. Then the dowels right in the same direction of the wooden bits. And now we're going to leave that on the side just for a little bit and we're going to come back with the little trees and basically we're going to add some uh, black paint on the edges just to add some character. Next, with those cute ornaments, I'm going to remove everything on it and just leave them plain. I think those little lanterns are so cute. Those I'm going to use it inside the triangles, but before that, I decided to add some cute balls with that uh, buffalo check ribbon and also some greenery. So I went ahead and placed those right on the top as you can see. And then I just placed the little lanterns right inside and now I'm just going to be placing the little trees on the base. 
and for the final touch I decided to use that wooden cutoff it says Merry Christmas paint it in white and place it on the bottle part and voila there you have it and I think those turned out absolutely beautiful Before to move on to the next DIY. In the ears, I got those clear that I think they are so absolutely beautiful. Some wooden cubes, wooden dowels, some hooks, and also some spray paint. In this case, I'm using the enamel paint, but uh, that can be just an option. So let's start by removing the labels. Once I had that, now we're going to be using the drill and basically draw halfway holes in each cube, just like so. Alright, we had that. Now we're going to use the wooden dowels and basically I'm going to be placing on it. So here I'm just showing that I'm using hot glue, but I did use a little bit of wood glue first. So then the hot glue for a quick process. Alright, once I had that, I'm just going to leave it on the side for a moment. And now we're going to work with the reindeers. So first, remove the tag. So next, I'm going to be making some holes under the belly of the reindeer. So for this step, you don't need that specific tool that I'm using. You can also use the glue gum tip. All you have to do is just hold it for a couple seconds until the plastic start melting. Right after I did the hole, I went ahead and grab a dowel and create better shape on there. Okay, so then I'm going to be attached them using E6000. So once I have them attached, I'm just going to give you a really good coat with my enamel paint. So let's go outside and do that. I think they look absolutely beautiful already. All I'm going to be doing here is just adding those little hooks because my idea is to use those reindeers as uh, stocking holders. And for the final touch, I'm just going to add some of this uh, cute ribbon from the latria as well. So I cut it in half just to make it thinner strips. So, and then I'm just going to place it in each neck of the reindeers and voila! And there you have it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. You can personalize it how you like it. Add some berries or something else on it or even red scarf. I wanted something like that. So, I think it came out absolutely beautiful. But I always would like to know what you guys think. Alright, for the next project, you will need two of those small canvases and also some bases. I got those that look like frosty and I think they are really cute. So first, I went ahead and removed the plastic and then all the staples to have all the frames. So once I had the frames, I just sand it a little bit just to smooth it out the edges. Then I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and give it a really good coat on it. Mm -hmm. 
and now it's time to assemble the pieces so as you can see here what I'm going to do is a beautiful centerpiece so I'm going to try it out first how the bases will look once I was ready to glue I'm going to be attaching them using E6000 so as you can see I, I put it back again and I start the other way around and for a quick process, I also add some hot glue on the bottom part. And there you have it. I think it looks so cute already. And now it's time to make a beautiful arrangement. So for this one, I'm going to use those frosting branches. I think they're so cute and some berries. And I think it looks so beautiful already. So um, as you can see here, I just almost done with that. But then I realized I can add some fairy lights. So I went ahead and add those and then place it the floral picks again and there you have it oh my goodness i think it looks absolutely beautiful but uh, like i say i always happy to read you guys comments so let me know in the comments down below i must say this one is my favorite all right so i went to ikea and i got that beautiful cutting board and then i used my cricut maker to create those cute vinyls so i create two what i love about this present is or gift idea is that you can use it all year long all right so as you can see this one is related for christmas so i just going to be placing using the easy press make sure that you check the heat guide when you use the easy press like that you know exactly what kind of temperature you need in this occasion i used a regular iron vinyl and, and this temperature was 300 for uh, 45 seconds so once i was done with the one side that's how it turned out and i think it looks absolutely beautiful all right so now for the other side of the cutting board i made that other cute farmhouse signs that i think is absolutely beautiful i just love every single phrase on it and so to make it easy i always like to cut small pieces when i use the item so let's do that At this point, our first idea is almost complete, but uh, for a final touch, I'm going to be adding also this little hand towel that I also made on another video a couple weeks ago and also adding this beautiful ribbon. So I'm creating here like a gift a look just to make it just double knot on it. And I also add another ribbon right on top just to add more details. And for the final touch, I'm just going to be adding some little mm, jingle bells and also some greenery. And there you have it. That is it for this one. I just love this gift idea because you can use it all year around just by flipping around. And there you have it.